Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol reveal breakdown and today we are taking a look at the living weapon himself Shang-Chi and uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and get right into things here and start by looking at a stack card here so we've had the front side of this card revealed for a long time but the flip side recently got revealed on a on a, on a live stream and now they've given us this this nice high quality version of it so we're gonna go ahead and talk about everything there is to talk about here uh lots of changes on his backside but we are going to go over the front again anyways for anyone who missed his uh initial reveal so he is shang chi he's coming in with four three four for his defensive stats so a little bit on the weak side on energy but pretty solid on physical and mystic only five stamina so nothing too crazy there and he is a four threat so relatively average to below average defensive stats for a fourth right here only having the five stamina is a little rough but he does go up to six on the flip side he's also going to be a size two with a medium move so nothing too special there he's coming in with two different attacks the first one is the ten thousand shapes strike this is a range two six dice physical attack but I kind of say that with with quotes because uh, he does have, before choosing a target, this character chooses whether this attack type is physical or mystic. So even though it says physical here, you can choose to make it a mystic attack when you are making your attacks. So that's always cool to see. It helps him push through a little bit of damage. And that's going to be useful because this is a builder attack. So he will be gaining power equal to the damage that he deals. So very, very nice to have that on a builder attack there and gives him some nice variety in his attack types. It also has a crit shield stagger ability. So after the attack is resolved, the target character will gain the stagger special condition if you roll those symbols, which is really, really nice. I mean, that's very, very similar odds to uh, Luke Cage's stagger trigger, and I'm notorious for getting that all the time. So I'm sure it'll happen with Shang-Chi as well. Um, but yeah, really, really solid builder just to start out having that option to switch types and having a really powerful trigger although not a super likely trigger i think it's something like 10 percent or something like that on, on luke cage don't remember exactly and i think it's fairly similar here but um yeah still really solid start to this this kit here his next one is the rising phoenix kick this is a range three five dice energy attack this one also costs zero power so the front side of his card has no spender on it all of his attacks are free and it says after this attack is resolved this character gains one power and after this attack is resolved he will place himself within range one of the target character so this is almost exactly uh iron fist's flying kick it's just one extra die and yeah that's solid i can already kind of see one of the things that i've said about this model from the start is that he kind of feels like luke cage and iron fist and then their heroes for higher tactics card kind of merged into one and uh that's very very true of his front side at least in my opinion so yeah i i'm definitely kind of seeing the inspiration from both of them here uh and then some added little benefits like being able to pick mystic and and things like that so yeah solid solid start to him here next he has hidden flower under the leaves this is an active superpower it's going to cost him two power and it says this character makes a move action followed by a ten thousand shapes strike attack this superpower can only be used once per turn so this is just your standard charge but it does specify it has to be this builder attack so you can't move and then do a rising phoenix kick to get that extra placement i guess they probably thought that would just be a little bit too much movement for him but that's still really really solid i mean the the, the the charge into an attack that that is reasonably powerful like this is always nice to have a little bit of action compression and as we can see that 10,000 shapes strike attack does have a lot more going for it than we've already let on but we'll get there when we get there the next superpower here is this first of two reactive superpowers and this one is dragon chases its tail or as i like to call it heroes for hire on a stick uh, this is a two cost superpower that says after an attack against this character is resolved if the attacking character is within range two and this character did not suffer damage from the attack this character may use the superpower throw the enemy character small so not quite heroes for hire you have to not take damage from the attack and of course you're not bodyguarding any models but it does have that that same kind of end effect of being able to throw the attacking character away from you so yeah really really nice uh defensive superpower here you know we've, we've already kind of established your defense dice aren't incredible but um that's going to make any any opposing model think twice about attacking you especially if they are you know even on, like they're on one health and they're they're activating and then they punch you fail to kill you or fail to do any damage to you and then you just throw them away and they're down and their activation is over 
Uh, this could also be great for just kind of, I'm standing on this point, and if you want to take this point from me, you have to be standing on it too, and make sure you deal damage, because otherwise I'm going to throw you away. So, yeah, really, really solid uh, little defensive kind of, um, you know, try to try to get your opponent to not want to attack uh, Shang-Chi here and, and risk getting thrown. So, really, really solid there. Next, he has five elements fist. This is a one-cost superpower. It's also reactive, and it says when this character makes a 10,000 shapes strike attack, after the attack's resolved, it may use this superpower. Note that you can time this, so you've already built the power from the superpower, or from the attack, when you choose to use the superpower, so you've already gained any power you did from dealing damage, which means even if you started with zero power, you can still do this if you built at least one from the attack, which is really, really nice. So the two choices you have are flow like water, this character advances small, or one inch punch. Choose an enemy character within range two and size three of, and of size three or less, and push it away small. If it contacts a character or terrain feature during this push, it gains the stun condition. Both of these are really, really good. I mean, Flow Like Water gives you some great extra mobility there. If maybe you charge, but you didn't quite get in range of the target, you actually want to hit. So you can kind of do that, or or maybe you want to be able to go stand on an objective or something like that. And then maybe you did get to the objective you want, but an enemy is contesting it. You didn't just one-shot them. Well, I'm going to pay one power. I'm going to push you away. And then even better, I'm also going to give you the stun condition by bumping you into something on the way fantastic both really really good i definitely like one inch punch more so i'll probably be using that more myself but i can see the strong utility from having flow like water there as well both really really effective really really powerful things the last thing on his card here is supreme martial artist when this character is defending against an attack targeting it with from within three this character adds blanks in its defense roll to its total successes and this is really really nice in combination with dragon chases its tail um because obviously that's going to help improve your odds to not take damage immediately i'm thinking characters that can make this guy re-roll or add extra dice to his his defensive rolls will very much be nice to have with him um just kind of increasing those odds that you you don't take damage from enemy attacks because yeah like 434 is a fine defensive line but if you're trying to take zero damage you definitely want something to boost that up a little bit more um but yeah that's that's solid that's probably one of the best like versions of martial artists that we have um because you know it affects mystic as well which most of them don't and um yeah range three so that's also really good a lot of them are range two so very solid defensive ability there for him going over to his flip side here we do have a few things change as we previously noted his stamina has went up from five to six so he's a little bit bulkier on this side of the card, but he does have a few other changes as well. So the first one here is his um, flying phoenix kick or rising phoenix kick has been removed and replaced with dim mac. This is a range to 10 dice uh, mystic spender. It's going to cost him five power. So it is a lot of power, but it's also throwing a crazy amount of dice. And it says, after this attack is resolved, if the target character has the stagger special condition, it loses the stagger special condition and gains an activated token. Um, yeah, this is this is really solid. I mean, that's a really hard-hitting attack, so if you have the power to be doing that, great. You could even kind of go like, oh, I'm going to use a 10,000 shape strike. I'm going to hopefully get that stagger on you, and then I'm going to go into one of these attacks to, to put an activated on you. This is going to be really good against a lot of more kaiju-like models that will actually survive that 10 dice attack, um, but also just a great way to hand out activated tokens. And another thing that he kind of feels like he's getting from Iron Fist, I really feel like he is he is like the fourth threat Iron Fist with a couple of Luke Cage's things tacked on. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. Uh, definitely like that, that spender. It's really, it's really interesting. And it's a kind of a cool play pattern because if they don't have the stagger condition already, you're just doing this for dice. It doesn't give them any, any conditions on its own. It's not like a lot of these where it's like, it'll give a stagger, but if they already had stagger, they'll be activated or it'll give a stagger. But if you get all these dice symbols, they'll be activated. No, this one is just either they're, they're activated or they're just taking damage from this. Um, so definitely some interesting, interesting choices to make with that one. Uh, he does still have his charge on this side, but his, uh, five elements fist has been changed. He's lost these two abilities. He instead replaces it with 64 infinite palms. This is pretty much the exact same type of ability here you pay after you're, you've made your builder attack here. However, the options that you have are different. 
So he does still have the one inch punch that is staying the same, but now instead of having the flow like water, which gave him the small advance, he has cleansing strike. So he removes a damage and a special condition from himself. But combined with the fact that he's got a little bit more stamina on this side, he definitely feels like he's a little bit bulkier on this side of his card. So yeah, that's that's really nice to have. You'll be able to remove some damage, maybe remove some some annoying conditions on you as well. Um, yeah, I, I I generally like that a lot. Um, I, I think it's definitely kind of a side grade from Flow Like Water. I think they're both very, very useful in different situations. So there will be sometimes you'll be you'll be wishing you had the other one and, and whatever. But cool i think it's it's really neat that he changes and, and has like a, a bit of a different kit there on his flip side the other ability he has is replacing his dragon chases its tail ability so he has lost that kind of pseudo heroes for hire sort of ability there and he's replaced it with wild goose leaves the flock this is a three cost reactive superpower that says when he is targeted by an attack within two he may use this superpower, so again, very, very similar to start to Dragon Chases its tail. But it says after the attack is resolved, this character may advance small, then place the attacking character within one of this character. This superpower can be used only once per turn. And this one doesn't require you to not take damage from the attack, so this is really, really effective for kind of being like, okay, I am standing on this point right now, you have attempted to punch me, and even if you got like a push or something like that, uh you i am walking back onto this point and then i am placing you within one of me in such a way that you are no longer contesting the point yourself maybe you're out of position on some other things you want to do this turn really really solid ability and it's going to be a huge deterrent from attacking him on his flip side here because i mean the first one you know if it's a hard enough hitting attack they can feel relatively confident they'll probably get a damage through and they don't have to worry about it but this one uh, there's no requirement for that, so if you have the, the power to spend on this, go to town. Um, yeah, this is really, really strong. I, I think this is an incredibly powerful ability, and I really look forward to playing playing Shang-Chi and, and playing around with all of these different kind of manipulations that he has between between those both of those defensive abilities and then his attack things. Really, really interesting kit, in my opinion one of the most interesting models we've seen so far just in general for this game um so many cool things he does i'm really excited to see how he works on the table so yeah that is his stack card we do have some tactics cards and some other things to go over here as well though so one of the things i do want to mention before we get into tactical uh, tactical cards yeah uh tactics cards is that in this little blurb here where they talk about kind of who he is and what his history is they do mention some teams he was a part of in the comics. Uh, notably, most of these are not actual teams, although I do like that they mention Heroes for Hire. It has my fingers crossed for a like errata to Heroes for Hire to give Shang-Chi the ability to play that card, or maybe it even becomes its own affiliation eventually. Fingers crossed it would be super cool. Um, but notably, he also mentions Avengers here, which I don't think we had any confirmation until now that he was going to be an Avenger. I think we just knew he was going to be Defender, so it would be really, really cool to see him being in Avengers as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and, um, we'll see there. I could also see, because of, like, his, his backstory, uh, kind of being originally raised as a weapon for a criminal empire i could see him even being in like crimson or something like that could be kind of cool let me know down below what you guys think what kind of affiliations you think shang chi might be a part of but anyways we're going to go ahead and get into his tactics cards so with shang chi they showed off three tactics cards here and i'm going to zoom in a little bit to make it slightly easier for you guys watching at home to read these and also for myself um so one of these or maybe no two of these we've already seen one of them i think was revealed in the same stream where we we saw the back side of his card whereas mystic ward has been revealed for a while so we might as well go over that one first mystic ward is a defender's card it's active so it has to be played on one of your turns and it says an allied defender's character may spend two power to play this card choose an objective token within range three of the character that played this card and place a mystic ward token on it the marked objective that uh, cannot be interacted with, contested, or controlled this round. If a player is currently controlling the objective token, they are no longer controlling it. Remove this token during the next power phase. So this is really, really strong. Um, the ability to just kind of point at an objective and say, no, that is that is off this turn, 
is fantastic. You could drop an extract and say, no, that's off this turn. Um, there's, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. It's going to be really, really strong on maps like Researcher, where defenders are already pretty strong because they have models like Hulk. And of course, Daredevil's leadership really likes that. So it could be totally be one of those things where like, oh, your opponent had a really good turn and they're actually going to score the Researcher and move it out of position for you. And that really sucks. What if nobody scored the researcher this turn and next round all of my guys are going to wake up and hit you like a truck? Fantastic. This card is going to be so strong. Um, I explicitly mentioned researcher because I think that's going to be one of the places where it is strongest. But even something like a, a scenario where you and your opponent are, sc are scoring mostly even and you're just kind of playing this weird back and forth game of neither of you wants to give up any of your points and your infinity formula is turned off. So I have a one point lead. You have to come to me now um that sort of thing could be really really solid um yeah i i really like I, I i think this card is really really strong maybe too strong but jury's still out on that one we'll see the next card we have revealed here is human weapon this is shang chi's card and this one is a action card this is using their their newer templating here active action so it is going to cost one of your actions and it does have to be played during shang chi's activation it will cost him four power it says he gets to advance his speed, which is medium. Then he makes the attack shown above. And this is the eight, uh, eight, what is that? Eight linking palms strike. Okay, I, I couldn't read the, the second word there for some reason. It's really weird. Like the, the, the text feels super small today for some reason. But anyways, this is an area two six dice physical attack. And of course it costs zero power because you're paying four power for the card. It says before damage is dealt, the target character gains the stun special condition. So that's already really nice to have, on, especially on an area attack where you can hit multiple. And we've already been talking about how good he's going to be on things like Researcher where everyone's grouped up and in Defender where you like that sort of thing. So an area attack's already good there. And then it also has this crit wild shield triggers. Three symbols on only six dice. But it's a, it says Relentless Barrage. After each attack is resolved, the target character gains the Stagger Special Condition if you get this uh, set of symbols on them. So yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, the odds of getting all three of those symbols on a six dice attack and all of those are only one side of the die, not great. But if you have multiple targets, the odds you get it on at least one of them is pretty solid. Um, so yeah, you're handing out some stuns, uh, you're, you're automatically handing out some stuns, I just acknowledge that you don't actually have to be dealing damage, it just happens. Um, and then you're, you might hand out a stagger or two as well. Yeah, that's, that's pretty solid. I don't know how great this card is, it is, it is a relatively low amount of dice for a relatively high amount of power, but I do think on the right map and with the right team it could be pretty solid, especially if you have some other dice manipulation going on. Um, you know, obviously you'd be damaging him for it, but maybe put like a Zemo beside him. So give him some rerolls on this to help get those triggers and get some extra damage there as well. Handing out a bunch of stuns is also really good. So it's hard to kind of estimate the value of this card, but it's definitely an interesting one. So I, I, I do like it. The last card Shang-Chi has here is Chi Mastery. This is an unaffiliated reactive card, and it says when Shang-Chi makes an attack during the modified dice step of the attack, he may spend three power to play this card. He may change two results in either the attack or defense roll to any other result. So that's really, really interesting for a couple reasons. The first one being changing two dice in your attack roll is really good for Shang-Chi, uh, whether you're combining it with human weapon here to get the stagger on that, or... You're just saying, oh, well, I didn't do any damage on my 10,000 shape strike. How do we feel about staggering you instead? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I, I think that's pretty good. Um, I, I, the, that's, that's really solid for Shang-Chi. Um, yeah, the, this, is, this is great for him, I think. The interesting part to me is also that um, it mentions defense roll, but you play this during the modify dice step of the attack, which I assume means they modify your own dice step of the attack. So, unless it's unless it's intentionally vague and doesn't specify which players modify dice step, so you play it during the time when you would modify your opponent's dice, because the timing on those two things is different. So that might be a rules forum question just to clear up, um, and how often that will actually matter is... Few and far between, but um, it's it's definitely an interesting one because when you modify your own dice, it's before your opponents rerolled their own dice. So if you play this when you're modifying your own dice um, to turn, let's say, two of their shields, maybe they got a perfect block, 
and you turn two of their shields into blanks, but they have rerolls, so now they get to reroll those blanks and try to get shields again. Whereas if you have to play this during your modify opponent's dice step, they've already passed the chance to reroll those dice. So it's it's technically weaker in it's like how I'm currently reading it. That'll be an interesting one, definitely a rules form thing, but I'm not going to dive too much into it here. Let me know down below what you guys think and how that's going to rule out as well, though. Continuing on through the panel to play here, um, not getting too, too much more here. We get the cool splash art of them here, but they're just talking more about some of the cards here. And and I skipped over this, but they were just talking about the, um, you know, the, the superpowers on his card and things like that here. So um yeah nothing nothing that i noticed given away like affiliations or anything like that that we weren't already aware of but yeah this is a really really cool character i think we'd already seen pretty much everything here except for his human weapon card at this point but uh i am really excited for this model he seems like he's going to be so much fun to play he's going to do a lot he's going to have a lot of control he's going to have a lot of mobility um, I think he's going to hit reasonably hard, but that's kind of not his, his main thing. He's definitely more of a like kind of control, uh, control mobility piece. Um, but because of that six dice builder that you get to pick its attack type, he definitely still hits reasonably well for a, for a four threat. Uh, of course, not having a spender on the front side hurts that, but then having a 10 dice spender on the flip side will help that a lot. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to putting this guy on the table. I've definitely already went ahead and, and pre-ordered one at my local game store and very excited for when he comes in because he's going to be super cool but that is going to do it for my ramblings on this guy uh, i'm realizing we're already at 20 minutes which is way longer than i usually like to make these reveal breakdown videos but um he has a lot to talk about he has a lot of text on both sides of his card and different text on both sides so i think it could kind of be expected with shang chi there was going to be more things to talk about here but let me know how you guys are feeling about him down below are you guys excited do you think he is too strong maybe too weak let me know where you guys are feeling on shang chi right now i'm definitely leaning towards he's on the stronger side whether or not he is too strong jury's still out on i'm gonna have to see him played to see how he feels i do think he might be a little on the squishy side but he has some great tech to kind of deter your opponents from wanting to attack him so it's going to be one of those interesting things of like when they do decide to go hard into him i think he's just going to die but they really have to commit because if they if they don't he's going to do very rude things in return so really excited to kind of see how that'll play out with him um, but yeah definitely let me know what you guys think down below let me know what affiliations you think he might be a part of and where you think he might be really really good seeing that he's probably going to be an avenger i'm definitely re-eyeing my my kind of steve one brick style list and being like oh okay wait a minute this is really good for that sort of thing. So we're going to see. I'm definitely going to gonna look into kind of how he might be able to mix up that and, and maybe shake things up a little bit for my Avengers list. But that's going to do it for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, we do reveal breakdowns like this whenever panel to plays and things like that come around. So if you're interested in that stuff, there's definitely more of that to come. But we also do things like character spotlights and other kind of more competitive focused discussions during the weekdays and battle reports on the weekends. So if you like any of that stuff, feel free to join on in. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Peace.